Welcome to today's devotion. I'm Pastor Tim Gerbing from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Today, let's listen to Exodus chapter 35, verses 1 to 3. Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, These are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day a day of Sabbath rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it is to be put to death. Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. After Moses came down from Mount Sinai carrying the tablets, on which were written all the commands that God wanted his people Israel to obey, the first thing that Moses did was to gather the community together so that he could teach them these commands. The people needed to know not only what God's laws were for Israel, but also how to properly understand them and follow them, what the significance of those laws were. These weren't just some random commands that God had arbitrarily thrown together. I'm intrigued by the fact that out of the hundreds of laws and commands that Moses received from God, The first one that he chooses to explain is the third commandment. We know that as, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Moses emphasized how important it was to not work on the Sabbath day. Don't even light a candle in your house uh, on the Sabbath. God considered not working on the Sabbath day to be so important that he made it a capital offense, death penalty, for anyone who disobeyed it. Why would God be so strict about not working on the Sabbath? Moses taught that the seventh day shall be your holy day. In other words, the Sabbath was a day to set aside all other responsibilities and focus entirely on God, on his word. In fact, right after Uh, this, Moses, after he finished talking about the third commandment, he then explained to the people the plans that God had given him for building the tabernacle, the central place of worship for all Israel. The word Sabbath means rest. Worship at the tabernacle will be centered on the rest that God provides. Rest from our personal repeated failures to try to please God with our works. Rest from being afraid of God's anger. Rest from worrying about God's judgment and and worrying about everlasting punishment for our sins. A rest that would be provided by the Messiah, the Savior who would come one day to be the sacrifice who would pay for everyone's sins. Everything that went on in that tabernacle revealed the serious consequence of sin and the love mercy, and forgiveness that God would provide through the saving work that his son would perform. God no longer requires that we not work on worship days, nor that we have to worship on any particular day of the week. We can worship any day of the week that we want. But God does require faithful hearts that believe in him, that want to hear from him, that fully trust in his son's saving work. Hearts that love his son for what he's done. And let nothing get in the way of regularly receiving the rest that God supplies for his people through his word and sacraments. May your heart be that kind of heart. Amen.